Hey friends, so my wife and I took a day off from everyday life and we decided to book a hotel room at the Fullerton. They have like this discount thing going on because the tourism industry is screwed because of COVID and so since it's cheap to get a hot cheaper than usual to get a hotel room, we thought that we would do it. So here I am and she's getting a massage right now and I have some time to kill so I thought I would make some videos. Rachel asks on Twitter, uh, how did I survive the education system? And she also asked about the GEP, which is the Singapore's Gifted Education Program, which I was a part of for a while, and about if it was useful in any way apart from reading books. It was. And uh, I want to spend maybe eight to 10 minutes talking about this. So education system, how did I survive? Ah, man. So, uh, you know, I, I plan to make more elaborate videos about this and I do have one video about school and I was going to make more videos. Anyway, I'm just going to start talking, right? Um, where do we start? Uh, I would say that before I went to school, I was in love with books. I was in love with libraries, right? My mom would bring me to the library every other week or so and I would get my library card, my mom's library card, my brother's and sister's library cards. So I just carry stacks and stacks of books and I bring them all home. And I would read all of them. I would read about dinosaurs and spaceships and, and carnivorous plants and ancient Rome, ancient Egypt, right? Everything I could get my hands on, volcanoes, plate tectonics. I would learn as much as I could. And it was fun and interesting for me. And, and it was, to me, what learning obviously should have been about. And so when I went to school and I had to go to school and wear a school uniform and do homework and sit in class, that was agonizing for me. That was just so frustrating and upsetting and I found it so boring and tedious. And, um, but yeah, I always kept, I still kept going to the library when I was a student. I would use the school library, I would still visit the public library, I would continue reading. When I discovered the internet, for me the internet felt like a massive, uh, magical library that I could participate directly in. So, you know, before the internet I was thinking, hmm, it would be nice to participate in this process right of um, writing books and reading books but i didn't know how i would contribute a book to the library because you know what do you have to do for that you have to get an editor a publisher a agent like i didn't know anybody in my life who did that sort of thing so i didn't know how i was gonna do that but when i discovered the internet to me that was like um, well here's a library you can publish directly to and so even when I was a kid, I think when I was like eight or nine, I had my own website, I had my own homepage with a guest book and with you know my favorite links to my favorite favorite jokes and my favorite games and my favorite parts of the internet. And that kept me going, I think. You know, and when I was a teenager I discovered music, discovered other like local bands playing music and I thought that was beautiful and warm and and nourishing. And so I school for me was like something I had to endure. It was it was this thing that I had to. I had no choice but to go because it's compulsory and everyone else is doing it and everyone expects you to do it. So I did it. But uh, I would say school played very small a role in uh, my education. Right? Like I, I, I can't remember who it was. Maybe it was Oscar Wilde who said something like, "I went to school, but I didn't let it interfere with my education." I feel that very strongly. I feel like um, school is where people go to experience. You know, it's daycare in some sense, and it's indoctrination in some sense, and it's it's just dehumanizing in my opinion, and uh, es especially if you've had this experience of experiencing learning by just diving directly into books which are written by authors who love you and want to teach you stuff and want to share with you what they love, uh, that stuff just felt so much superior to school that 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 school to me felt like. Like it was cheating me out of time. It was, it was you know, um, depriving me of the opportunity of an education. And I think for people who didn't have that relationship with books, they would not have had that feeling. Now to talk about the gifted education program for a bit, I think there are a couple of, so there are pros and cons, and I, I might make a separate video about that someday. But uh, you know, the, the pro is, one pro is that the classroom, size are small, classroom sizes are smaller. Like uh, when I was in St. Hilda's Primary School, there were about 16 to 18 of us in a class. And when I was in Victoria School in Sec 1, there were 13 of us in a class. So it's very small, very intimate, a lot of one-on-one -on -one attention with teachers. And I also think the other thing that the GEP did, which again is also good and bad at the same time, is that they take you very seriously and they tell you quite explicitly 
that you are expected to be the future leaders of the country. You're expected to be, you know, be like get into leadership roles and, you know, probably end up in a good proportion of you end up being like in government or industry leaders of some kind or just they expect you to do great things. And I think um, there's something healthy about that in being exposed to in uh, allow in, in kind of having these very casual ambitions. There is also a bad thing to that, which is that um, it's it's kind of burdensome. It's a lot to put on a kid. Like like the the future of the country depends on you. Like oh shit, you know you're, you're just a child. You're thirteen, and uh, but you know so I, I was quite neurotic about that for a while. I think in my late teens and early twenties, I think I've resolved that. I think I worked through my issues and you know got more perspective on the rest of the world, the rest of the country. Read more widely, talk to more people, and realize that it's not that big a deal. Education is not school is not that big of a deal. Education is a lifelong process. You can all you can start learning whenever you want. You know, you can you can pick up a book for the first time in your thirties, and then spend ten years reading books and talking to people, and then become a very learned, cultured person. So yeah, I'm I'm not a fan of how people think about school. I'm not a fan of how school is conceived of I think we can do better especially now that we have the technology for everyone to have a smartphone in their pockets everyone can communicate with anybody else anybody can write and publish anybody can make videos anybody can comment on anything you can build relationships with you can speak there you know like on Twitter you if you want to be like a microbiologist you can look up microbiologists on Twitter and they are sharing their work as they are doing it and you can learn from them like casually and you can make friends with them it's amazing it's like ah like when will school catch up school is going to be very slow to catch up because you know as an institution it's designed to kind of minimize the risk and not take crazy chances and it's a system of assessment and yeah i can go on about that for a while but all in all i would say you know and i had some great teachers from here and there both before and after the gep and during and you know there were there were some teachers who clearly do it for the love of teaching and the 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 benefits or like the 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 spark that they imparted to students i feel was almost in spite of the curriculum right it's like when they had a free moment in between having to teach kids to the cur- teach kids the curriculum teach to the test um, you would see flashes of of their passion and what they love and what they care about i remember i had this gp general paper tutor in junior college her name was uh, mrs wendy go and she was passionate about like women's rights in in uh, I think she was showing us like a video of, of Nepalese girls and it's just you know it's not like she was preaching at us it's not like she was she, she just clearly had strong feelings about um, equal like equality of, of access of opportunity to education and learning and you know people having the freedom to do what they want and that that had a had an impact on me and I carry it with me to this day, right? I, I carry all of the best things about everyone I've ever met with me all the time. And that is, I think, how I survived, you know, um, school, the military, being a working adult for five and a half years, and like just generally going through life, having to pay bills and do tedious, difficult, unpleasant things. I just always return to what I love and what people you know what musicians have shown me what artists and authors have shown me that life can be an adventure and i mean it's also an ordeal because you have bills to pay but it can also be an adventure and as long as i remind myself that life can be a glorious adventure i think i'm doing pretty great uh done